Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Retro Station PC Edition. For the people who are familiar to these products, yes, it's the familiar Retro Station 40K, but only the PC Edition. But for the people who are not familiar with the Retro Station in general, it has nothing to do with PlayStation 5. It's just basically unboxed. It can be an Android box, but in this case, it's going to be in PC, where we can play a lot of retro games with. Depending on what kind of model you're having, like the Retro Station PC, we can play a lot of different things. And with a lot of different things, think about the old school retro stuff, but also up to Nintendo GameCube is possible to run on these devices. But how good it will run, that is something we'll find out in this video. Alright guys, so what are we going to get inside the package? So first of all, it's basically a Windows PC. So also we have the functionality of having a dual boot. So switching between the Bodashera software, whether the system is running the retro games or the Windows 10. It's quite an interesting concept. But what are we going to get inside? We're going to get inside the manual itself or manual like basically like some printed stuff that you're going to get. But he did a very nice explanation how the dual boot works and how you can get into the system. Inside the package we're going to get two controllers, but we're going to take a close look later. Then we're going to get another wireless Bluetooth game handle manual, because this is the manual for the controllers. We're going to get ourselves a wireless keyboard in this kit, because it is really convenient into, if you just want to have the functionalities of Bodhisattva or Windows itself. And here we're having where all the magic happens, that is the mini PC. But how about the controller quality? In the past I've reviewed some of these super controlling devices and the Chinese are always giving me these crappy controllers. I have seen these controllers, some brands and AliExpress sell them and I must say that this is not bad at all. We're going to get trigger buttons and the fake ones from China don't have those because they are like PlayStation 2 knockoffs. The L1 and R1 or the better set, the shoulder buttons feel very nice. The controllers are what's smaller like usual but they feel very comfortable and click is D-pad. The analog sticks feel very nice, so an overall built-in lithium battery. So this thing feels like a way better quality than we have seen before with the Super Console X. So extra kudos for the controllers. But let's take a close look at the mini PC that has an Intel inside. So this is not AMD Ryzen based, that is something you can see maybe in the future with other brands or maybe also with this brand, you never know. But most of these mini PCs are just really good. And depending of course what kind of version, we're having the i5, i7, i3 series, but this is the one with the J series quad cores inside, or better known as the Celerons. Alright, so let's take a close look. We're having here the system itself, an extra manual with explanation, quick start guide. Over here we're going to get, I am guessing, the power supply, yep it is, so let's take a close look what kind of power supply we're going to get, because that's always the question. So this isn't just a basic 12 volt power supply. In here we're going to get some extra goodies like mounting bracket, because you can put it behind a monitor if you want to. Of course the needed screws for putting it on the monitor mount, and that's it, that's the only thing that we're going to get in the box. Let's take a close look at the system itself. Okay, so time for the Wicked Nerdy time, yeah, because we're going to take a close look at the specifications. The CPU is the G4125 Intel Celeron 2.7GHz quad core. The GPU is just a built-in HD600 from Intel, 8GB of DDR4. The main storage is 128GB SSD, the second one a 2TB hard disk, it is a 2.5 inch laptop drive. Of course, two times HDMI, one time VGA, and we're having Windows 10 in combination with Bodhisattva Linux. But how is it with all of the connections, and what can we do with it? So on this side, we're going to get a headphone jack out, Ethernet connection, two times HDMI, and then we're going to get the USB port over here. That's a 2.0, and over here we're going to get the input for the power supply. So at the front we're going to get the on off switch, if you have a DF slot, we're having three USB ports and over here what you can see, we're having the dongles that are like for the controllers that we're going to need. The device itself has been upgraded with a 2TB disk that will contain the Padashira software. He is using a 2TB CAG disk for giving like excellent speed, it's not the fastest out there. But it's fast enough for using a piece of software combination with an emulation. Of course you can always upgrade it with SSDs in the future if they are going to be more affordable. Because I think now if you need to get yourself a 2TB SSD, they will go around 170, I think 180 euros. 
so that's a lot of money for a basic 2TB SD upgrade. But I think it can be having a big effect on it for the loading times. And at the left side, we're going to get a VGA old school connection. And I would be, it would be really cool if you can use this machine in an old school CRT arcade machine. If it's compatible, that is up to the software. Alright, so before we're going to boot it up, the first thing that you need to do is adding the dongle for the keyboard because we're going to need it. Putting some batteries in it and let's boot it up. Okay, so let's boot up the system itself and the reason why you need a keyboard is the very simple reason. We're going to get the normal BIOS boot, but then we're going to get into the option to choose yourself an operating system. So it has been set to the retro station PC. So if you don't do anything within 30 seconds or so, it will boot up automatically in Bodasera. But here we can check out the other options. But let's check retro station PC to begin with. Here you can choose different settings, just choose normal and you're good to go. Within a minute or so, you're going to get the boot sequence in combination with the load screen. And then we're ready to go. So let's take a close look at the menu itself. Okay, so first of all, the controller has been reconfigured for the system, so that is ready to go. Well, let's take a close look at the menu itself and what is this device capable of. Because I can tell you like what it comes to this PC edition, they are quite expensive, but you have so much compatibility with different games. So when you're comparing the Super Console X PC and all the other devices with the Retro Station PC, so the biggest difference what you're going to get with the PC edition is just we can emulate more stuff, especially when it comes to the more depending. Think about PlayStation 2, PlayStation Portable, Wii, that are like the system that can run more games. And when it comes to MAME, there we're going to get like the more demanding games, like a Killer Instinct or Tekken will run just fine, that you can't run on a cheaper box. So compatibility with a lot of different games combination with Bodacera Linux. I think it's a really great piece of software. And yeah, but don't <laughs> I just want to point out that you can just make this thing yourself and reconfigure this. But overall, it's a really cool piece of technology now. And yeah, you can play so much stuff. You can see even for light the gun compatibility, there is so much stuff you can do with it. But I just want to scrape the surface with this review and just give you like a quick look of some high demanding emulators. Because all the other stuff like the Game Boy, and yes, 16-bit stuff will run just fine on this. Okay, let's start off with MAME. Not a really demanding game. I just want to point out that games like Tekken are super demanding, but it is still required some reconfiguration, because you see the game will boot up it runs really slow and there is no audio whatsoever and this is not like that the emulator and in combination with the hardware can't run it it's simply like a reconfiguration that is needed with the emulator itself okay so next up let's try killer Instinct. great example it's the same like the tekken games super demanding but this game seems to be running just fine as configured correctly oh by the way i really suck at this game i have no idea what i'm doing here But like Killer Instinct is a system that you can only run on a PC system like this. And Raspberry Pi 4 nowadays can also run it, but you need to overclock it like crazy. And with a PC, you don't need that. Cruising, yeah, yeah. Cruising the USA, yeah. Okay, so let's see how the game runs on the PC edition. It also is very important what kind of emulator is running on the back end. So this one is running on the Mupin, and it runs way better than all the other ones I've tried before. But we got some more juice in combination with this. We can finally play some Cruising the USA. And when I'm trying to play this game with the same kind of emulator on a Retro Station 40K or Super Console X, I'm always going to have issues with it. 
because it does have not enough juice to run it. Ooh. Ooh. In the more gambling games like N64 with GoldenEye, if you could configure it correctly, we can play the game. I think I just shot him in the balls. But still, it has a minor hiccup here and there. Say hello to my little friend. Oof. Next up, Nintendo GameCube will always be a very hard thing to emulate on a lower power device. Because even if it's a PC, it's a basic low power PC. But let's test out this game. Because it's a more demanding game, like all the other ones. And most of the part it will run just fine. It runs on native resolution. If you want to upscale it, forget about it. And you can already see that it's having minor hiccups here and there. If you want to run this on higher resolution perfectly without any lag whatsoever, you just need to have some more juice. Next up, let's try the Wii. And with the Wii, you can see that it struggles. I've played this game a couple of times before and I noticed a lot of hiccups. And in my opinion, it makes this game unplayable. And this, the reason why it does so many hiccups, is just because we need more power to play this emulator perfectly. Of course, in overtime, when they are like involving this emulator that has better compatibility also with low rent stuff, it will become better, but in the end, we just need some more juice. Next up, Sega Dreamcast. And Sega Dreamcast, is, you can just play these things on a low end system nowadays. Of course, if you're going to put it on a PC like this, we can have better resolutions, like full HD. Depending on what kind of CPU GPU combination we're having, but we can just play Sega Dreamcast on the RetroStation PC perfectly without any issues. Next up, PlayStation 2, with a low-end system like this, some games will run just fine and some will be super slow. But sadly, this game is way too demanding, and this is what I mean with hit or miss. But here you can see that also Chris Bendicoot has some issues. It is slow crash bandicoot. A new way to play. Slow motion. Alright, so with PlayStation Portable, I want to do the ultimate test, the God of War test, just to see how this runs. And you can already see from the start of this game that it works very well. For using this thing for a couple of hours, it is quite hot, but it includes a passive and active cooling. But let's open it up and just see how will this thing look in the inside and how is this thing built. Alright, so I have removed the four screws at the bottom and then we can lift up this compartment. This is just a compartment for the extra hard disk I've shown you before, the two terabyte. So that is what we're just going to leave in here, but let's take a close look at the mainboard itself. Over here we're going to get a very thick sticker that they have put on the main board and that is for protecting from the hard drive that is on top of it. It's not a very perfect, it's not a perfect con construction simply because we're going to have some heat transfer 
up to the main board itself. So if you replace this thing with an SSD, those things are not getting really hot nowadays. That would be more convenient in my opinion. So this is what we're going to get in the inside. So first of all, we're going to get two wires, one over there and the other one goes at the bottom. And this is for the Wi-Fi capability or better said, the antenna. Say the connection over here, then we're going to get the input for the power for the main board. But here we're having the internal storage. So if you change it out, it is possible, but you need to do a full teardown of the casing. The casing itself has been made, yeah, let's say, pure out of plastic mostly. There are not really like big metal parts in it for giving the main board some extra cooling. So the cooling itself, it is a gigantic ventilator. So this is more like this tunnel that sucks in the air from on the outside and blows it through the cooling block beneath it and blows it out over here. So the construction itself, it's not bad at all, but I wish we could see more, let's say metal part inside the casing. So that it gives this more like extra cooling. And if you ever need to replace this battery, that will happen, I think up in five up to 10 years. You need to do a same teardown like I did over here. Remove all the screws, lift it up very carefully for removing the battery or the BIOS battery. So what do I think of the Retro Station PC? So we are looking at a combination of all the boxes I've reviewed here on the channel. This is more like a mid-range mini PC. And you will see this in the performance, especially when you're looking at the high-end stuff. PlayStation 3, forget about it. Wii U, some games will run, but in general, forget about it. But it's more like up to PlayStation 1, but we can play some GameCube, some Wii games. But still, it's a very powerful machine and a lot of stuff like N64 that didn't run with the previous models, like with the normal retro station or super console X, you can play them now very good with this mini PC. It's a really awesome piece of the hardware, comes with really good controls. I was surprised to see how good these controllers actually are. Yeah, so this is what you're going to get. I want to thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And it will be great to see you in the next video. So consider subscribing and hit that little bell.